channel for physics. Please subscribe my channel. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Physics Partner. Today we are going to discuss the Bohr Atomic Model. Scientists have a number of ways for describing the structure of atoms. In this video, we will focus on one of those models, the Bohr Model, which was first proposed by Niels Bohr in 1913. The Bohr model is a modification of an earlier atomic model, the Rutherford model. You can refer my video on Rutherford model. Don't worry, I will share the link in the description. The Bohr model has an atom with a positively charged nucleus surrounded by negatively charged electrons that have circular planetary like orbits. Today, we know that the Bohr model has some inaccuracies, but it is still used because of its simple approach to atomic theory. The Bohr model was also the first atomic model to incorporate quantum theory, meaning that it is the predecessor of today's more accurate quantum mechanical models. In the Bohr model, the electron travel in defined circular orbits around the small positively charged nucleus. The Bohr model is known as planetary model because these orbits look similar to that planets orbiting the sun. You can see on the screen, it looks like the planets orbiting the sun. There are three main factors that categorize the Bohr model. First, in the Bohr model, the orbits have a set size and energy. You can see here. Number two, there is correlation between energy and size. The smaller the orbit, the less energy it has. Number three, electrons can move from one orbit to another by emitting or absorbing radiation. According to Bohr, electrons orbit could not hold a certain number of electrons. If an orbit was full, the remaining electrons would create a new orbit. That's why when you look at Bohr diagram, you will sometimes see more than one electron orbit circling the nucleus. That happens when there are too many new electrons to be housed in a single orbit. Electrons can jump between two orbits, but only by absorbing or emitting energy. The normal energy level of an electron without it taking or releasing energy is what we call a stable state while moving to a higher less stable orbit is what we call an excited state you can see here the excitement of electron the excited state of electron when the electron receives no more energy to allow it to remain in the excited states it returns to its stable state by releasing the extra energy. So jumping to the higher orbit would require energy while immigrating to a lower orbit would release energy. But in the second case, in what form would this remaining energy be released? Bohr suggested that the light emitted from hydrogen atoms was the result of transition of an electrons from an orbit further from the nucleus to an orbit closer to the nucleus. This energy is released as a quantum of light with the exact same energy the electron lost. As I mentioned before, the Boha model has a fewer inaccuracies which were fixed in later variation of atomic models. Let's have a look to what are the limitation of Bohr atomic model theory. It violates the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The Bohr atomic model theory considers electrons to have both a known radius and orbit. It means its known position and momentum at the same time, which is impossible according to Heisenberg. Number two, the Bohr atomic model theory made correct predictions of smaller sized atoms like hydrogen, but poor spectral predictions are obtained when larger atoms are considered. Number three, it fails to explain the Zeeman effect when the spectral line is split into several components in the presence of a magnetic field. Number four, it failed to explain the Stark effect that the spectral lines get split into fine lines in the presence of an electrical field. So it's all for today. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this video is useful for you. Thank you very much for your time. Take care of yourself. See you in the next video. Goodbye.